Next-gen Ryzen and NVIDIA gaming laptops are finally here. I've tested the new Ryzen 7 5800H processor with NVIDIA RTX 3070 graphics in 14 games at 1440p and 1080p resolutions. I've also compared it against a bunch of other gaming laptops to show you what the differences are. I'm testing with the XMG Neo 15. It's the same Tongfeng chassis as the Electronics Mech 15, which I said was the best gaming laptop of 2020. And now that it's got a Ryzen option, well, things just got interesting. My 30 70 runs at the highest 125 watt power limit. However, thanks to Dynamic Boost 2.0, it can boost all the way up to 140 watts depending on the workload. The control panel software lets you modify performance modes. I've done all testing with overboost mode enabled and all power limits maxed out. This laptop allows us to disable Optimus after a reboot. So I've done all testing with the integrated graphics disabled as this will boost performance. We'll start out by looking at 14 different games at all setting levels at both 1440p and 1080p resolutions. Because we've got a 1440p screen here. Then afterwards, I'll show you how this new hardware compares against other gaming laptops. Red Dead Redemption 2 was tested with the game's benchmark. I've got the 1080p results shown by the purple bars, and 1440p results shown by the red bars below. I've also tested every available setting preset, which are listed on the left with lower levels at the bottom and higher levels towards the top, so you can get an idea of performance at different setting levels. Even with max settings, 1440p was still above 60fps, which is an impressive result for this game on a laptop. Cyberpunk 2077 was tested in Little China with the Street Kid Life Path. I only recently added this game so don't yet have a good idea of what's normal for it, but 1080p was still able to surpass 60fps even with ultra settings, though the ray tracing ultra preset was a bit below this. 1440p still played quite well as long as you're not maxing everything out. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was tested with the game's built-in benchmark. 1440p with the highest ultra setting preset was only just under 60fps, so I'd say it's probably quite playable given I played with a frame rate below this on my PC recently. I've tested control with and without ray tracing. Let's start with the ray tracing off results. I found the game perfectly playable with above 60 FPS averages even with the high setting preset at 1440p, though 1080p was able to hit near this even for the 1% lower. Here's how things change with ray tracing enabled at high settings. The frame rates dip quite a bit comparatively. 1080p high settings was just capable of 60 FPS though. By turning on DLSS, we're able to boost frame rates significantly. Now the 1% low from 1080p high settings is around 60fps, and 1440p high settings with ray tracing on is now reaching higher frame rates compared to not using ray tracing thanks to DLSS. Watch Dogs Legion was tested with the game's benchmark. The 1% lows weren't too different between the two different resolutions. Ultra settings at 1440p wasn't quite able to reach 60fps, but I'd say this is definitely still usable. However, we can boost average FPS by 24% simply by lowering to very high settings. 1080p wasn't offering too much of a performance boost. And given I don't think you need super high frame rates to play this one, I'd probably stick to 1440p high settings for a nice experience. Microsoft Flight Simulator was tested in the Sydney Landing Challenge. 1440p was around 60fps with a low preset, while 1080p saw similar one setting level higher at medium. You can of course play this game just fine below 60fps though. There's not too much loss going up to the high end preset. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was tested with the game's built in benchmark. I'll use this title to compare against some other laptops soon. But spoiler, these are excellent results compared to last gen hardware. Even 1440p with the highest setting preset is above 90fps. There's only a small difference at the lowest setting preset as we're likely more CPU bound there. Battlefield 5 was tested in campaign mode. Again, no problems at all even with 1440p ultra settings, which was only just under 100fps. Though lower setting levels would make better use of the 165hz screen that I've got. Speaking of utilizing that screen, Fortnite was tested with the replay feature. Like it or not, this is still a popular game, and it's close to the screen's refresh rate even at 1440p high settings, while even the 1% low rises above the screen's refresh rate one level lower at medium settings. I've also tested CSGO as another esports title, because when I looked at AMD's new Zen 3 processors on the desktop side, I found some pretty big gains in this title, and that seems to be the case here too. Generally we'd see 250 to 400 FPS last gen at 1080p. Rainbow Six Siege was tested with the game's benchmark using Vulkan. Again, no problems at all running this one. Even at 1440p ultra settings, the 1% lows are above the screen's refresh rate. Meanwhile, the 1080p results at ultra are the best I've ever recorded from a laptop. Metro Exodus was tested with the game's benchmark. Like some of the other games tested, there was basically no difference at either resolution with minimum settings. 1440p was still able to reach 60fps at ultra though, which is a great result for this test. Death Stranding doesn't have too much difference between the various setting presets, and even max settings at 1440p was running above 100fps, so no problem 
problems at all playing this one. Last game before we look at some comparisons. It just wouldn't be a Jared's Tech video without The Witcher 3. Again, above 100 FPS with ultra settings at 1440p and playable without any issues. Now let's find out how well this hardware compares against other gaming laptops. Use these results as a rough guide only, as they were tested at different times with different drivers. I've tested Battlefield 5 in campaign mode at ultra settings, and the Neo 15 is highlighted in red. This is an excellent result, only being beaten by the 180 watt RTX 2080 in the Triton 900 or 200 watt 2080 in the MSI GT76 desktop replacement. The 1% low is also quite good too compared to most others, though in this game I have found that to vary more so than average frame rate, despite the fact that I'm taking the averages of 4 test runs here. This new hardware combination moves up one position relative to the same laptop selection in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Again it's actually beating the 180 watt RTX 2080 and i9 9900K desktop processor in the Alienware 51M just below it. It was only being beaten by one frame by the far thicker MSI GT76 Titan, again with desktop 9900K and 200 watt 2080, making this a very impressive result. Far Cry 5 was also tested with the game's benchmark tool. Although the Neo 15 result is one of the best I've got, it's beaten slightly by a lower wattage 2080 Max-Q in the Triton 500 just above it. Otherwise to get much higher, generally we need much higher wattage GPUs like those 2080s in the GT76 or 51M. I've found this test to depend more on processor power than the other two games, and I'm still yet to dive into the performance of the 5800H. Definitely make sure you're subscribed for some upcoming comparisons with it. Overall, the performance here is clearly next level. Although I've only got 1080p data for comparison purposes, as we saw earlier, this laptop is certainly capable of playing modern games at 1440p with higher settings. At this stage, it's hard to say if the gains are primarily due to the Ryzen 7 5800H processor or Nvidia RTX 3070 graphics. It's probably a combination, but I'm hoping to get more laptops in that will allow me to do better comparisons between last gen and next gen. So make sure you're subscribed for all of that upcoming content, there's going to be a lot on the way.